Hey everybody, it's Michelle Lee from Wilmington, North Carolina, and we have a very special guest today. We have Greg Gallant with us from Muckrack, and um, we're going to be talking about a couple of things today. We're going to be talking about why journalists need to be on Muckrack, and why anyone who is a communicator also should be on Muckrack so that they can communicate with journalists. So I'm going to let Greg go ahead and introduce himself, and then... Greg, when you're done, we'll let everyone kind of introduce themselves really quickly and get started. Sounds great. Thanks for having me on, Michelle, and, and for teaching me how to, and to all of you for teaching me how to set up the uh, lower third here. Uh, basically, with Muckrack, it's something that came out of another thing that we created, which is the uh, Shorty Awards. And we saw back when Twitter was very young, it, it was very hard to know, like, who you should follow. So if you're interested in news or politics or sports, there was no way to know who you should go and follow in those categories uh, on Twitter. So we created the Shorty Awards in late 2008. Originally it was um, something we just built in two weekends. It was almost a joke uh, where we just threw the site together very quickly. And within 24 hours of launching it, it became the top trending term on Twitter. It kind of blew us away. We dropped everything. We organized the first event in exactly uh, two months. We ended up getting sponsors, anyone from the Knight Foundation to Pepsi, and flew winners in from around the world. And what really struck us was it both got a lot of media attention, and then at the Shorty Awards, we had a press room set up for 20 journalists, and we had 60 show up. We ran out of food and drink from them, so... Uh, we realized two things. One was that journalists like to drink, and two is that they were on Twitter in a really big way. And at the same time, too, everyone was still questioning the value of Twitter. They were saying, well, you know, it's user generated content. How can you trust it? Is it valuable? So the idea behind Muckrack early on was like, hey, what if we built a site where you could just see, show me every journalist from the New York Times, from, uh, you know, from NBC, from Fox, from uh, Fox Wilmington, and then if you trust what they say on TV or in the newspaper, why don't you trust what they say uh, on Twitter? And you can kind of get a view of like what tomorrow's newspaper, you know, tonight's newscast is going to be before that, because you'll see the journalists putting it together. Yeah. And so I... that gave us the original idea for Muckrack, and uh, we've just kind of been blowing it up from there. How old is Muckrack? So we launched the initial version in 2009, and then we did a complete relaunch about a year ago. And so over the past year, we added in a lot of new functionality, like the journalist profile pages, for example. Yeah, I like the journalist profile page. If, if you don't mind, Greg, can I have everyone kind of introduce themselves to you? Because then maybe you'll get to hear how they are using Twitter and how they're trying to communicate with journalists as well. Yeah, I'd love that. Okay, great. Barry, do you want to go ahead and get started? We'll just go down the list. Um, Barry Wright with White River Broadcasting, Columbus, Indiana. And are you on Muckrack yet? Not yet. Um, I was just uh, looking over it a few minutes ago and probably will be before the day's over. <laughs> but you're on Twitter and you're using Twitter. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. We use Twitter quite a bit at uh, WCSI. I am here in Columbus. And the new so, um, Twitter has definitely changed everything, and uh, look forward to uh, checking out the uh, mutt rack. Okay, Christopher, you want to go ahead? Oh. Well, I think you're muted. His mic is probably muted. Yeah. Yeah. We'll come back. How about Evan? Hi, uh, Evan Millward with uh, KMIZ in Columbia, Missouri. Um, have an empty muckrack profile, I think. I joined a few months ago, and I don't think I've ever finished uh, filling it out um, And on Twitter. So I actually figured this was perfect. This would be a great way to figure out how I fill out this profile and what I use it for. Wonderful. So thanks, okay. Michelle. <laughs> yeah, no, pro no problem. Anything for you. Okay, Kim, go ahead. My name is Kim Beasley. I am a social media strategist. I use Twitter every day, not only for myself, but also for my clients to grow visibility. I am a member of Muckrat. I've been a member for quite a while. I use it mainly to, uh, as a source to feed me 
information what's going on in the journalism community and what journalists are looking for. I um, use it in conjunction with help a reporter out, so I use both of them uh, as sources for me and my uh, clients. Hello, I'm Michael Banks. I'm a soldier, as you can see, but I'm also um, I manage some of the social media organizations on my college campus, which I'm also a part of. I am on MuckRack. I have a completed profile, but I also I use it to see how different journalists, different communicators use their social media to use it in my organization. Okay, Richard, go ahead. Well, I'm Richard Cleveland. I'm the CEO of Naked Ape Productions. We are a grassroots internet broadcasting company here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And as far as Muckrack goes, this is actually the first I've really heard of it. So thanks for inviting me to uh, get some insight. And yes, I am on Twitter and Facebook and all those other nice places. Great. And Scott, do you want to go? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. I, I really have nothing to add other than I am um, here to learn. So that's, uh, that's about all I, I know at this point. But Not Scott... <laughs> But Scott is an influencer. Um, he's our news director, and then also, uh, you know, he has a, a great vision for social media and moving forward in news. And um, also, you know, you have news director meetings and meet with a bunch of people who make big decisions in the news industry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess Greg, if you want to start, I mean, does do you think Muckrack helps journalists more, or people who want to know what journalists are up to? If that makes any sense. No, that's a great question. Uh, whether Muckrack helps uh, journalists more or people who want to kind of find journalists. And when we started Muckrack, the idea was really to help people see what journalists are talking about. But then very quickly we saw that the, um, the journalists really loved it for two reasons. One was it increased their visibility. So they liked the... Um, the idea that they could use it to get more followers. And then also, uh, I'd say the most important part is they use it to find their colleagues on social media. Because if you work at a news organization and you want to know which of your colleagues are on you know, any social media platform, the best place to go is Muckrack. And in fact, a lot of news organizations now link to Muckrack in their, um, in their internal intranets as ways for people in newsrooms to get to know their colleagues. How do you guys find topics? Um, you know, because if you go to the newsroom, you'll see maybe, you know, an article that, or, you know, a, a topic that's been written, but then you'll see what everyone's tweeting about. How do you, how do you even determine what is going to be talked about in the, new, in the muckrack newsroom? So that's uh, completely algorithmic. No humans are involved in that part. So there, there's kind of a, but there are human layers of curation with muckrack. So the way that it works is that, uh, anybody can come to Muckrack and set up a journalist profile. Then we have a team of editors who who verify them by publication. So, for someone to get onto a publication page like New York Times or Wall Street Journal or you know any, I mean we have hundreds of um, publications on there. Our journalists verify them and list them there. Then what are um, so there's like that one layer of human curation. Then our algorithm figures out what are these journalists tweeting about the most. So it'll figure, it'll parse through all of their tweets, all their links, and then it'll figure out, hey, if 15 journalists just started tweeting about this one link, that'll rise up on the newsroom. And then it'll slowly drop down over time unless it keeps getting more and more tweets. So that's really what makes that page so dynamic and up to date is that it's essentially like kind of a newspaper put together by, you know, over, uh, really we're up to over 15,000 journalists now. Oh, wow, I was going to say 15,000. You know, it's, it's amazing because I did um, learn a lot just from Muckrack on the Russian adoption ban. So, I mean, it's, it's really amazing how it has helped with my coverage as well, just in terms of what we're going to talk about in the newscast. Um, I, I am curious about the verification process for people on Muckrack. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, um, there's, kind of, there's kind of two layers to how you can use Muckrack. One is that just anybody can use Muckrack to create a profile manage a portfolio of the work that they've done, talk about what they cover and what they don't cover, 
fill out an interview on how they work. We also have a job board section that's available to anybody like that. So the idea is that for anybody out there, be it uh, you know, a journalist, a student, someone looking to break into the industry, they can use our profile tool, portfolio tool, and job board to further their career. And then we have a team of editors. So if you want to get listed within a publication or a beat, basically through that profile tool, you request to be added to the publication or the beat. And then that goes in a queue. We have a team of editors who will then research uh, to verify people. We list our criteria on our site, uh, either in the footer or if you could just go muckrack.com slash criteria, but basically uh, to be verified, you have to be a professional journalist. So either working at a media organization or being an active freelancer with uh, reputable uh, places that you're getting bylines frequently. Gotcha. And I noticed, you know, that my company was not on um, the list of media organizations. Do you suggest? I mean, we're we, you know, I'm not surprised that maybe our um, that our station's not on there, but maybe like our umbrella organization, Raycom Media, um, is that how we should try to go about, I guess, getting Yeah, well, well you should actually get your, well, let me ask you, how many um, journalists you have on Twitter at your organization? Everyone, but I don't know how many that is. Scott might know. <laughs> um, yeah. but, but everyone here is on Twitter. So basically, if you have a news organization and you have over, I forget the exact limit, but it's like over five or six people on Twitter, you should get a publication page on Muckrack. So what you can do is just go to uh, muckrack.com and then scroll to the footer. And uh, there's a link there that says add a publication. And when you click that, it'll give you a spreadsheet to fill out. You just enter in all of uh, the social media handles of your colleagues and send that to us and, along with a, uh, an image and it will add you to the publication page. Oh, very and cool. Great, and then the great thing about that is, is not only are you listed there you know, with every other publication, but then on your publication page it will figure out which, uh, which stories of your organization other journalists are tweeting about the most and it will also figure out which of your journalists are the most active on Twitter. Oh, so then so, it becomes uh, like a little competition. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. so it, it's 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 good. It's a good, friendly way to kind of nudge anyone who's been kind of straggling, really adopting Twitter to uh, to get more into it. I have a question for you. Uh, sure. I am a, I am a freelance journalist. I actually do uh, social media correspondence for a station out of Reno, and then I'm starting to work a little bit more with other newscasters like Michelle and. Where do you see a good fit for me as a freelance uh, journalist to get in and get started and really get the best use out of Muckrack? Yeah, so I would I would say that there's you know a few elements to that. One is I would definitely suggest you set up a profile, and the way the way to do that is just go um, muckrack.com/journalists, or if you just go to muckrack.com, there's a link in the top right that says for journalists. And then um, once you're there, you can connect your Twitter account, then build a muckrack profile. And that's just a good way to showcase like your bio, the past work that you've done. You can upload a portfolio and you could, um, you know, even if you, if it was a story where maybe you contributed and you didn't write it, you could note that there and show like how you're working with various places. Uh, you know, again, there's a job board which sometimes people, you know, will, post things that might be similar to what you're doing where they're looking for kind of a consultant or an expert. And then aside from that, you know, uh, you know, one really good thing is to monitor the newsroom and like see what's breaking and which journalists are talking about various issues. You can also hit reply straight from the newsroom so you could start interacting with journalists on Twitter straight from Muckrack. So it makes it very easy to do that. And then uh, one other great resource is we have this daily email called the Muckrack Daily, where we have a uh, an editor of our own summarize what all the journalists are talking about every day. So in a way, if you don't have time to um, to go on the newsroom all the time, you can use the Muckrack Daily to get a summary. 
and that also includes uh, job changes too, which is a, a you know really interesting way to see like who's going where, who might need help. Oh, I like that. A lot of journalists like that as well. Um, what kind of things should journalists be adding to their portfolios? Because some people, you know, will have blogs or maybe they'll do like a guest post somewhere else. Should they be, is there a best practices, uh, a best practice for that? You know, should it just only be stuff from there, from where they're actually employed? Yeah, you know, I think one of the, one of the things that people really like about the Muckrack portfolio tool is that you can, First of all, you can add something to it with just uh, really two clicks. You just copy and paste in the URL of the portfolio item and then click add and then it'll automatically grab the image and all the metadata. So you can edit that, but all you have to do is paste in the URL. And it will um, it'll let you pull in from anywhere. So a lot of journalists will use that to pull in work they've done all over. You know, increasingly people are doing lots of things. So it used to be that, you know, someone would just work at the same place forever. But now that, um, you know, things are more dynamic, you, you're going to want to um, upload the work that you're doing where you're working now. You might want to upload a couple of the best pieces that you did where you worked prior. And then you could do upload things that you've done elsewhere around the web. So, for, you know, for you, for example, you could both upload work that you've done uh, you know, on your station's website or, you know, segments that have been posted to your station's website, but then you could upload some of the Google Hangouts you've done uh, to your portfolio too. So you could show the breadth of work that you do between both um, on air and on Hangout or whatever the, uh, whatever the term is. I mean, personally, I, I do some guest writing in various places. So I've done a couple of guest pieces for Fortune that I put on my portfolio. Then I did a couple for my personal blog. I did a couple for Muckrack blog. So I like using my portfolio because it's the one place you can see all my writing across all these various places that it's landed. Do you have an example of when something just blew up really big on Muckrack? I'm going to try to pull up a screen share of um, the newsroom just to show people. Okay, great. Well, let's see what's there now. Can you see that? <laughs> what would your signature look like if Jack Lou wrote it? <laughs> it was really good. I was giving this presentation when I was in Vegas for uh, Blog World uh, over the week, or on actually this past Monday. And when we, I showed the Muckrack newsroom, and it was this article: uh, four copy editors killed in fight over AP style guide, and you know <laughs> from the Onion, of course. <laughs> but it, it had a great reaction in the crowd. That's so cool. Can so you have a, a now trending section, and then the one line press releases. Can you go through some of this page and explain just to people what it what sure. it's all about? So you the, tell me, and I'll, I'll I'll go there. Okay, great. Well, well, let me just explain what's on this screen first. The center column is which stories it uses a algorithm similar to Reddit where we figure out what stories are the most journalists tweeting about most recently and then it shows you both the story up top, it shows you the overall number of people that have tweeted about the story and then it shows you um, uh, how many, you know, what journalists have actually said about it and the really cool thing about that is that in addition to getting just the journalist's name you also get what their title and publication is and that's all data that our editors maintain that's not even in Twitter so you get one of the great things about Muckrack is you immediately get this context on who these journalists are uh, tweeting about it rather than having to go digging for it. Oh yeah I do like that that's really awesome. What about what's this one do you think when it just says none? Uh, I don't know click on it you know sometimes <laughs> it's all uh, our, uh, automatically parse so sometimes oh. there's something that keeps it from doing it. It must have been a little bug with uh, Yahoo. Oh that's interesting. <laughs> Professor attends conference. See and often it's much more interesting to see what journalists are saying about a story than what the story actually is. Right and that could be like with businesses too. I th correct? Like you could say you could find out what your what uh, journalists are saying about your business if you were a communicator. 
so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Actually, if you use the uh, search box, you could do that. So you could um, you, know, you could type in the name of uh, of your station, for example, and then see what other journalists are saying about your station. Oh boy, I don't know if anyone's saying anything about. It. <laughs> let's go with <laughs> let's go with somebody else. Let's go with our sister station, maybe because they're in Charlotte. Okay. So there's, I guess it looks Here like there's just you're actually finding person. people who are there, but if if you click edit search, up here. Or no? uh, oh, see, edit search. Yeah, right, they're right, right there. Okay. So have it. Um, or let me see. Well, you know, maybe I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, or let's do like CES since that's happening right now. Oh, okay. So this will show us like what journalists are saying about CES. And, it and then and you it, could also switch it to most recent maybe instead of most relevant. What determines most relevant? And Just the number of retweets, maybe, or the number of people who follow? It, it's basically, it, it's more about like how how um, how many times a person tweets about the term and like how central it is to the tweet. Gotcha. See, like here in the first example, he doesn't even mention CES in the tweet, but we index the full text of what he links to, and it finds CES in there. Oh, so wow. it actually can uncover a lot of stuff that even Twitter search can't get. That's pretty cool. And so the cool thing about this is, like, let's say you were at CES and you want to figure out, like, okay, what journalists should I connect with? Here you can see all the journalists that are at CES. Or if you're a company and you want to just know, like, hey, what, um, like, we're using it right now for the Shorty Awards where we get uh, millions of tweeted nominations you know, of course, only a small fraction of them are from journalists, but we follow that, and then we know which journalists to talk to about the Shorty Awards. Uh -huh. This is great. I love this, because you could really go hunt somebody down and talk to them if you wanted to, you know, if you yeah, were... Yeah, and see, there's a reply button right in, right in there. So you could either add her to a media list in here to save her for your own notice, or you could just hit reply and just start tweeting at her. Where's the reply button? Am I missing it? See, um, right... Uh, oh, right here. Yeah, to the right of the Twitter bird. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that makes it so easy. That's awesome. Is there anything else that you want to sh go through? Or anyone... Does anyone want to go through anything? Actually, I'd like to ask a quick question of Gregory about uh, using Muckrack as a news aggregator for a show that we do on technology. Would Muckrack be a, a good fit for that, or should we look into the individual aggregators that are out there? Because for me, if I can go to one place, I'm going to one place to get all my news. Yeah, sure. So in other words, you do a show on technology, and you're looking um, for a kind of source of content to, to cover and talk about? Right. Yeah, I think that it would be a, a really good fit for that, because, it, you know, that's what it's all about, and then um, we have a whole beat for technology, so you could go to that section and then um, see what technology journalists are tweeting about the most specifically. But even off the general newsroom, it'll just give you a sense of what's out there, and not only what are some stories you could be talking about, but like what are some interesting tweets about those stories that you know kind of could give you an angle to riff off on. Excellent. Now I see that you've got pro features on here as well. What's the advantage to becoming a, a pro muckraker, as it were? Yeah, that, that's a great point. And actually, um, the search that Michelle showed is a pro feature. Um, so Muckrack Pro is something we introduced about a year ago with a, a whole bunch of new functionality. And the idea is that it's, um, it's free for journalists uh, who get verified. And then for uh, PR people or companies or social media experts or anyone else who wants to to use it to get press and find journalists it's a paid service that starts at $99 a month per user and with that it lets you do the search that we just did together so the idea with that is it can give you you know really advanced um, advanced monitoring you can also take those searches and create alerts which is one of the most popular features so you could get emailed any time a journalist mentions a term relevant to your business. So with that CES example, if you see create alert, 
um, it'll now email you once a day with uh, everything journalists are saying about CES. Uh, you know, in this case, that's going to be uh, overwhelming. But for example, we have a, uh, a uh, an alert set up for Shorty Awards, so we know whenever a journalist is tweeted about our award ceremony, so we'll, we'll then follow up and invite them to attend or cover it. And it's been just extremely eff effective because we're now connecting with journalists that are already interested in our topic. Then you can also create media lists, access by beat, and um, really kind of flips the whole way of doing PR on its head because traditionally people just kind of say, okay, well, I have a tech product. I'll get a list of you know 5,000 tech journalists and email them all and beg for coverage. And in the process, you end up you know, pissing off people, and um, at, at that level, you know, you, ha you know, the only thing you could do with a list of 5,000 is to spam all of them, whereas with Muckrack, the idea is to say, okay, we'll find the right, like, five journalists or 50 journalists who are already tweeting a lot about either your business or, if not you specifically, who are already covering something, like, extremely relevant to what you do, so then they'll actually be interested in what you have to say. So when you pitch them, you're pitching the right people, and you could go into it with an angle that makes it very relevant to what they care about. Sorry, I muted myself. Could you guys, could you guys see what I did <laughs> in my search? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Michael, did you have a question? Or did Michael leave? Oh, I think shoot. Michael just left. I think he had to leave. Oh, no. Okay. Or well, he maybe got kicked out. I don't want to keep Greg any longer than, um, or anyone longer than they need to be, but do you want to say where you think Muckrack should be? Do you have any plans, like where you want to see it um, in the next you know, year, in the next five years? Um, you know, how, can, how people can use it and how you want to see people use it in the future? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I, I'd kind of sum it up as saying that, you know, really with Muckrack, we want this to be the, the most powerful place for journalists to be able to connect with each other, build their careers, build their profile pages, you know, get more followers, get new career opportunities. And then for anybody else, be it a large company or, uh, you know, a new startup, Muckrack is really the best way to find the right journals to connect with on there. So, you know, I think as you watch out for what we're building, there'll, there'll be a lot more around the profiles, making that a much more powerful tool for journalists. The search will keep getting better and better as you could find journalists in much more interesting ways. And then, you know, more new things like the job boards that we're doing, et cetera. And then aside from that, we're kind of just building a whole bunch of things around that where we, we do uh, you know, our daily email, the Muckrack Daily. We've done a whole bunch of in-person events, which we, uh, we actually do a weekly Twitter chat called Mucked Up, uh, hashtag uh, M-U-C-K-E-D-U-P, uh, which has become very popular. And then out of that, we started doing in-person events that we've done in various newsrooms, anywhere from NBC News to uh, LA Times and um, Boston Globe, where you could actually come, we'll, you know, we'll come to town and meet all the people in that neighborhood. It's an open invitation for everybody and is completely free just to come out. So, you know, it, both be it on social media, on our own website, through email, through Twitter, through in-person events, it's all about kind of bringing this community together. Thank you so much for your time, Greg. Do you want to add anything, or does anyone want to get in one last question before we let Greg go? One last question. <laughs> when did the Twitter chats happen? The Twitter chats happen, uh, I believe, Tuesday nights at 8. And if you, uh, if you sign up for the Muckrack Daily, that always includes a preview of what the topic is. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Greg. We really appreciate your time, and hopefully by the end of the day, you'll have at least 10 more people signed up. <laughs> I just signed up profile. now. <laughs> well, that sounds great. Well, everybody, let me know how you like it. I'm at Gregory on Twitter if you want to, uh, if you have any more questions about it. And thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, no problem. We'll see you soon. All right.